Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and macOS Mojave is out finally and brings a few new features, but one in particular that we've wanted for quite some time on iOS. Instead of bringing it to iOS, they bring it to macOS. So go to system preferences, go to general, and then we have a system wide dark mode. So everything switches to dark and this carries across most apps, but some apps that are made by third parties may need to update their app in order to have dark mode. Now, the next thing is this wallpaper. This wallpaper is a new dynamic wallpaper and under our desktop and wallpaper settings, you'll see here there's dynamic desktop and based on the time of day, this wallpaper in the background will change. So that will change or we can use this one and it will change throughout the day. And uh, it's pretty nice. The dynamic wallpaper, you can see there's light, dark, dynamic, and we'll just leave it at dynamic, but there's a lot of other really nice wallpapers in here and I'll be sure to link those in the description. Now the next update is stacks. This is specifically for the desktop, but you'll see here it's organized them into stacks, images, screenshots, and then it just left my folders alone. But you'll see here it says images. If I scroll with two fingers, it goes through them. Same with screenshots. It groups them by itself. You can also group them by work date, by tags, and maybe even client names or whatever you'd like. Now let's open one of these up. Let's click on this one and hit the space bar to open preview. And in preview, this is one of the images I shot for a previous video. In preview, we have some new options. So we can rotate right in preview. Let's see, there's this button. We also have the ability to mark up the photo. So you'll see we have all of the options we have in our normal markup in most applications. We can crop it, rotate it, add text, draw on top of it, whatever we'd like to do. And it's all available there. And then we can share it We'll revert there. We can share it directly from here to whatever application we'd like. So you don't even have to open an application to mark these up anymore. You can just edit them in preview and be done with it. It's a really nice handy feature uh, that is just a nice refinement. Let's close that. Now the next updates have to do with finder and you'll see I'm in the finder. I'm just looking at my desktop folder, all of these things over here. And what the finder has in it that's kind of interesting is they brought back cover flow, but renamed it. So it's called gallery view and you can just go through them using your arrow keys on your keyboard, go through them or use two fingers or click whatever you want and go through all of your different images or whatever you have on the desktop by scrolling. And then the other thing you'll see is that we have new metadata on the right. So we've got a bunch of information built in. You can turn this on or off, but it'll tell you what type of camera it was taken with. You can see the resolution is 6,000 by 3376. When I took it, when it was modified or created, the exposure time, the focal length, the ISO speed. If I use the flash, it's got all of that information, even the F stop number, white balance. It's pretty nice. And you've got all of those options in here as well. Now we can rotate directly from here, just like we could do in preview and we can mark up just like we could do in preview as well. So it just opens that same dialogue and lets us mark this up. It's a really handy feature all built into finder. Now, now there's a new screenshots dialogue and you can either open the screenshot utility by going into utilities or hit command shift five. And now you've got a little bit different screenshot dialogue. And what you've got here is capture entire screen, capture selected window, capture selected portion, record the screen or record a selected portion. And then we have options of where to save it to a timer and a couple other options as well. So maybe we want to capture the entire screen. We'll just do that. And then it brings it down here. And here is our captured screenshot. Now we could screenshot before, but now we've got all of the markup tools that we have on iOS brought over to the Mac. So this is kind of bringing all the features we're used to on iOS over to the Mac as well. So you'll see, you've got all those same features. If you want to sign a signature or whatever you'd like to do, it's all built in. Now, one of the most impressive features that they've added has to do with taking a photo. Now this works across different applications such as mail messages, notes, pages, keynotes, and numbers, and also in the finder, but let's open the notes here. Here's my new note. And one of the things you can do that's really impressive is click this button and click, take a photo. It will immediately open the photo dialogue on my iPhone. I can click and take a photo here of what I'm capturing and I can say, use photo and it immediately goes over to the Mac. And I can do that over and over from any of those applications that I mentioned. So that's built into notes and all in notes, pages, keynote numbers and finder, and is really handy if you need to get a picture in there really quickly. It just works kind of magically. It's pretty impressive. 
Now, one of the features we won't see for a little while until there's an update is group FaceTime. And that's built in. I've shown that on the iPhone side. It works the exact same way. But group FaceTime is something I look forward to. It was in iChat years ago, and then they removed it. And now you can talk to up to 32 people at once on your Mac. But that will come out later in a later update. Now, the next thing is they've added some apps from the iPhone to the Mac. So we have news, stocks, home, and voice memos. So if we open news, it's the same news app. We'll wait for it to load here. It's the same news app. I'm not sure that it's great, but it does the same thing. If you want to use news, let's open stocks here. And these are basically iOS apps ported into the Mac. So I think we'll see more of this in the future. And it seems that Apple's going to bring that ability to app developers for next year. We've also got home if we want to manage our lights. You'll see there's home. We've got the home pod and home and different rooms and automation. All of those things are here that you can set up. You can see my lights that are turned on right now. And those are all set up and it's nice to have it on the actual Mac instead of just the phone or the iPad. We also have voice memos as well. So in voice memos, it does the same thing as it does on the iPhone. It notes the location that you're at, which is right here. I just have it blurred out and then you can just hit record and it will record. And that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple and straightforward and saves across all devices using iCloud. Now the next thing, there is a brand new app store. So the app store has been completely redesigned to be more like it is on the iPhone. So you'll see it looks very familiar now. If you're used to the one on the iPhone, you've got create, work, play, develop, categories, and then of course, update. And it's got all of these different things in here. So it's really nice. It's very easy to navigate and look around in. And that's been brought over as well. It works on dark mode, as you can see here too. And then one of the big things is privacy and Mac OS Mojave requires apps to get your approval before accessing the camera or microphone. So there's been some concern of people being able to turn those on remotely. Apple says they can't do it now. Now that doesn't mean someone can't bypass it in the future, but right now they can't do it without asking for your permission. And then also within Safari, We'll go into Safari here. Safari now prevents cross site tracking. It sort of did that before, but it also does with another thing where people try to get your digital fingerprint to track you, basically getting your information about your home network as much as it can, your IPs, your different Mac information. Now Apple sends them generic information when you go to a website. So maybe you visit Facebook, it sends it generic information, or maybe you visit any, any website it will not know your information anymore. It just gives it a generic ID. So it can't track you based on what information it thought it already knew. Also, if you're setting up a new password on a website, it will suggest and fill it with strong passwords. And also it flags existing passwords that have been reused in Safari previously. So it will let you know that, Hey, you've got passwords that are the same. Now, as you can see here in the top of Safari, we've got the little favicons or favicons. We've got one for each site. You actually have to turn this on in Safari under preferences and then under tabs, show website icons in tabs. It wasn't turned on for me by default. It might be for you, but you'll see there's the Apple, there's the Z for Zolotech, and you can see those on any website. We'll close that out and a couple small things that are added emojis now work more easily in mail. And then also Siri is related to home kit on the Mac as well. So you can use Siri to turn on your lights and things like that. Mojave also adds UK English, Australian English, Canadian French, and traditional Chinese for Hong Kong language options. It also improved maps for China and Romanized English input for Japanese keyboards. And that's pretty much it. Apple hasn't put a ton of new features into this version. They've added essentials and it's really more of a stability update and refinement. So maybe we'll see a redesign next year when we expect to see a redesign of iOS as well. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.